Today we're going to talk about something that uh, I've had rattling around in my head for several weeks now. And I want to introduce the thought by saying something and seeing what it reminds you of. When I say wax on, what do we think of? And then when I say wax off, what do we think of? By the way, I saw the correct gesture already. So what, what does it remind us of? The Karate Kid. So if we look at the idea of wax on and wax off, Mr. Miyagi is trying to teach the young man how to defend himself and how to be a man and how to control his environment and how to deal with bullies and everything. Well, today I'm going to tell you that wax on and wax off also relates to us as Christians. If I say, oh, look, there's a bright and shiny Christian, what do you think? Does that bring anything to mind? How many people have we seen that are obviously Christians who have perfect hair, perfect clothes, perfect makeup, perfect car, perfect lawn, perfect house? Now, can we say spit shined and polished? Absolutely. Now, when we think of wax and waxing something, a floor, a car, what's the purpose of the wax on the floor or the car? So what's secondary to the protection? The appearance. The appearance. So for a Christian, what should appear on our outsides that everybody sees and meets in our day-to-day -day lives after we've closed the gap between the life we live and the life yet unlived within us. What should people meet when they come and talk to us, when they walk up to David or Nancy or somebody? Dave? Okay. Uh-huh. Right. So Dave is identifying they should meet Jesus. You're saying they should see the light of Christ or see what Christ is all about. Uh, Diane, you had a thought. How many Christians? Oh, Nancy, you got a thought as well, please. Oh, this is the second time in a row she's gone right to the heart of the matter. So Diane says they should meet something radiating from us talked about through the expression of our face. And Nancy says that's all fine and good, but you should meet a real person. What is the badge? What is the mantle? What is the, the dress we should appear in daily that people meet that say, that tells people by this shall you know that's my disciple Phyllis? the love. Now, have you ever seen or been in a situation where the response is this? Oh yeah, I, I hear you. I went through that last year and I'm going to pray for you. And then the prayer doesn't happen. The words were uttered, but the follow through did not occur either to you or towards someone else. I know I've seen that happen in many different ways. What about what about the 
the fact that by the fact that you love one another shall all men know that you're my disciples what about going beyond that in the world of man in the realm of Satan the prince of the power of the air in the worldly lives around us is there something that is a badge or a uniform that we put on that we exude that we show and demonstrate that people understand that we mean business by can you think of descriptive words Curtis There's a quality that if you claim you've come to know Jesus, that should be identifiable in you. So that is saying someone should be able to observe something and perceive something. Now let's look for descriptive words of when we think of Jesus and we think of who he was when he walked the earth and who he is now in us and amongst us, Eileen. So you're describing that he loved the lowest of the low, the broken, the sinners, the ones who were average in society and the ones who are wealthy. He loved mankind equally. Did not discriminate. Curtis. Phyllis. You're heading right to where I want to go. Nancy. Sanity. What does that say about the experiences, the pains, the agonies, the joys, the love overflowing? That says it was real they're real the experience was real that notion of looking in someone in their eyes and looking at their face and seeing same thoughts strength resilience even weakness and vulnerability at times does the word sincere come into that does the word sincere fit the description of Christ so how do we demonstrate sincerity now I'm gonna make a connection here the wax on protects the floor makes it look good protects the cars paint makes it look good the wax not being on you see some of the flaws in the paint you see some of the old showing through which is more valid a 45 year old car with two coats of good wax or a 45 year old car with all the original paint that looks like it's been worn but it's nice which is more important hmm? the latter because it's real that comes back to what Nancy said the real the experience now Nancy you're having a thought there that's strong okay Nancy says anybody who's caring for their car is gonna put wax on it and take care of it Eileen okay okay
Okay, thank you. Nancy? Ooh. Okay. So now we're beginning to see something. When you put the wax on, you put the wax on, but it doesn't look perfect until you rub the excess wax off. Now, sincerity in the life of a Christian, in our lives, sincerity is paramount. It is very important. Sincerity is the sign, it is the emotion, it is the response that conveys, I'm telling the truth. I mean it. This is how I live. This is who I am. Have you ever met someone who's not sincere? I, I'm going to tell on my brother. When he was 12 years old, he was the most insincere person that lived in Pierce County. He was scattered six ways to Sunday, as the saying used to be, about what was important, what he wanted, what he believed in as a kid. The only sincerity he had was when he saw that he wanted it until he wasn't looking at it. Then he wanted something else. Now my brother is one of the most sincere people I know. But he went through a lot of experiences to become holistically sincere. Now, when we think of Jesus and his ministry and his life, was Jesus sincere? Did he ever show signs of being weak when it came to sincerity? What does sincere mean? What does it mean to be uh, genuinely sincere? Yes. Um, it does. Follow through assists in proving sincerity. Now, when we think of sincere, this is what we're talking about free from pe pretense or deceit. What's pretense? Previously planned intentional appearances to convey a specific thought and result when someone looks at you or hears you or sees what you're doing. Sincere, proceeding from genuine feelings. Think of what genuine means. Heartfelt, wholehearted, profound, deep, and there's all kinds of greater descriptions. When we think of being Christians and we think of bringing Jesus, after all, we live in and through him and he lives in us. When we bring Jesus to the face-to-face -face contact with someone, how, old is, how important is our sincerity? Could we say that's foundational to what we convey to someone, to what we give them to walk away with and understand and think about? Being sincere is incredibly important. To show how sincere God is about his son and what Jesus brought to the earth and gave to mankind, God put in place the moment in history where the veil into the Holy of Holies was rent, torn in two. And that immediately gave access to man, mankind, the common man, the slave, the politics people. It gave access to any and all who know God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to go and speak with him directly and to have that one-on-one -on -one connected life. 
does that show the sincerity that God has for us in his love for us? Absolutely. You know, it, when we think of sincerity and we think of our daily lives, in interacting with each other here, we try to be very sincere and honest. That's a redundant statement, by the way, to be sincere and honest, because honesty is a part of sincerity. We try to be sincere on Tuesdays and Wednesdays when we do things, share what we're gifted to have. We try to be sincere when we invite friends to come and visit us at church. We try to be sincere about everything. Is it correct that we try to be sincere? Or is there another way to look at sincerity? Curtis. Yes, Nancy. I think there is a fine line between being sincere and trying to be sincere. I have had many days in my life that I've tried to do good and be good. And we know how those days go from time to time. We don't end up where we wanted to end up in our spiritual mindset at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, we can see sometimes modest success, sometimes miserable failure in being spiritual. In being sincere, there's a reason Jesus says, I'll give you your faith. It'll be my faith that will become your faith, and I will give it. There's a reason why he gave it. So what I'm hearing you point out is that being sincere doesn't guarantee success, but it does guarantee something. What is it? What we're talking about here is honesty and intentionality. When you have a new baby, you intend to be a good mom, a good parent, a good teacher, a good helper, a good messer, cleaner, upper on aisle three, sometimes many times a day. You intend to do many things. When we are sincere, we are demonstrating the foundation of our beliefs. Do you remember the doctrines we talked about last time? There were these handful of ideas that were the lowest common denominators of our doctrine. What is the Bible? It's the inerrant word of God. Who is Jesus? All of that. When we're sincere, we're honestly portraying our belief system in action we're honestly portraying what we relate to and we're portraying what we stand for and all of that centers around love James I actually had that experience once 
and it haunted me for years. I actually wound up going to the mate of this individual and humbly asking for forgiveness for that. Now, how do you suppose that mate saw me? Did they see me as sincere when I said I'll go visit? At the moment they did, but they learned I wasn't. And that changed how I look at things. It didn't guarantee my behavior, but it changed how I perceived things. So if we're sincere, we're honest, we're being truthful, we're being the image bearer of Jesus to someone else. Should we be sincere in the morning and insincere in the afternoon when we're tired? How do we deal with that? What is a way as Christians we can deal with sincerity waning as the day wears on? Ask for more. Diane. So you're talking about being intentionally positive for a moment and moving away from the personal invasive awareness of a bad day or a bad situation. Mm You're talking about the truth and honesty of the situation. Nancy, you had a thought. I think put the best foot forward, put the best face on, fake it until you make it. Curtis. Thank you. Um, Phyllis. Our response is what she's pointing at here. You know, months and months ago, it's probably been over a year ago, I showed a brief video of a pastor standing on the stage ranting that God hates everyone in that room he was in. God hates you because you're deceitful. You don't do what you say you're going to do all the time. He was picking on people not being genuinely sincere. There's a flaw in that notion. 
Adolf Hitler was as sincere about what he believed as Billy Graham was sincere about what he believed. So, sincerity isn't always based on truth or justice. Just as the valid faith we live with comes from Christ, the love we live with through and by comes from the Trinity. Sincerity can be man, earthly, humanly. It can be built upon things that are misrepresentative and misguided. But the sincerity that is Jesus Christ is always where our feet should be planted. Sometimes we do have to put on a smiling face despite terrible, grim circumstances. Sometimes we may have to say, I, I, I can't do this right now. Please forgive me. But I have to get composed and get myself on track here where I need to be. I'm, I just don't have the right attitude now. Sincerity as shown by Jesus was based upon truth honesty love compassion grace mercy sincerity was based on some very interesting notions now do you think the woman at the well was aware when she saw this man her culture prevented her from talking to or being around was at the well. Do you think she had any thought at the end of the encounter when she went to walk away? Do you think she had the clue that Jesus could have held her guilty of her sins as easily as he found her the way he did and as easily as he interacted with her the lesson he gave her? She walked away and she talked to people. She conveyed the grace bestowed by this man. Sir, I think you are a prophet. Now Jesus' sincerity in that moment didn't decimate. It didn't utterly destroy everything. But it did take a real good whack out of her normal daily living. Now we're going to look at an example for a second. The most commonly looked at situation in the Bible statistically when it comes to sincerity is 1 Corinthians 5. The chapter is a short chapter. I'm going to read it to you here from the New Living Translation. Paul writes, I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality going on among you guys. Something that even pagans don't do. I'm told that a man in your church is living in sin with his stepmother. Now what's the first big thing that jumps off the page at you? A man living with his stepmother in church. You're so proud of yourselves, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame and you should remove this man from your fellowship. Now here's this situation and Paul is setting up, placing judgment on it. Randall talked about judgment and whose it is. Paul was appointed to execute this judgment. Even though I'm not with you in person, I'm with you in spirit. Well, that's kind of the way Jesus operates part of the time. That's the way the Holy Spirit operates part of the time. It's that notion of I send you my love, my grace, my mercy, my caring. You have my faith. Stand on it. And as I, if I were there with you, I've already passed judgment on this man in the name of the Lord Jesus. You must call a meeting of the church. I will be present with you in spirit so will the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's Paul looking at this and he's pointing out, even though I'm not there, understand the authority. 
that is being given to you in words. You must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the day of the Lord's return. That, that's strong and powerful words. Hand him over to Satan and let him go. But then, when you look at that, that creates a diametrically opposed situation. If Jesus is there to save lives and to provide and to bring grace and mercy in, that suggests there's a point at which the church doesn't go farther. There's a line to be drawn and we don't step over that. Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Now, when you put yeast in a loaf and you let the yeast go to work, it migrates through the whole loaf. It goes through the whole loaf and it takes it over. Uh, in one sense, we can say that it is organically infecting the loaf. The yeast spreads and multiplies and takes over. Yes. So remove this wicked person from among you, then you'll be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. And it, it's pretty simple to understand the yeast is sin. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the festival of unleavened bread, not with the old bread with yeast of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. Now, if you dive into this at this point and go look at the cultural context and look at the commentaries that are talking about what was written and why it was written and what the original transcripts talk about it comes down to the point of actually connecting social behavior with this what it is saying is this live your life of unleavened bread in an unleavened way every day, every hour, of every week, of every year, and do it through Christ. Now, for some of us, the day of unleavened bread is familiar. For others, it may not be. But the point is, if leaven is like sin, it invades and it takes over. So here's Paul. He sets this up to where this fellow suddenly sees, wow, something's changing. Do you think he had a clue the axe was going to fall on his behavior in his life? I'm pretty sure there was uh, rumors. Rumors are everywhere people are. Notice I didn't say a person. Rumors can be and sometimes are everywhere people are. Paul goes on to ins explain here. So let us celebrate the festival, not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. Now, if you take all of the things sincerity is made up of, honesty, trust, all the things that go into it, living our unleavened lives, can that occur physically by our actions, by our choices? every day we can participate in it but we live in a world full of sin and what we must remember is this the bread of sincerity and truth is the bread of the Trinity the bread of sincerity and truth is the bread of communion it's the bread of life it's Christ the sincerity and truth that we should live by daily should be based on truth, honesty, faith, knowledge, spiritual foundation that's stable, that's well anchored. 
Now, I'm going to pick on my brother for a second here. When someone says, do you really mean what you say to Curtis? Do you think they come away from asking that question, understanding what he believes sincerely? I've seen that happen. I saw somebody ask him, do you really believe what you're telling me? And he was one of the most sincere people I've seen in years in sharing, yes. Sincerity is the badge. It's the armor we put on when we meet other people and come to interact with them, to talk with them, to work with them, to bicycle with them, to talk to them at the gas station when we're filling up. Our sincerity conveys credibility. If you don't appear sincere, you may not come across with credibility. What is credibility? Believability. I believe that you mean what you say. So when we in life look at who we are, the wax that we should be wearing, the wax of sincerity, the honesty, the truth, the beauty of Christ, the care, the protection of our lives. Those things are very important. Mr. Miyagi taught the young man how to protect himself. Can you imagine what that movie would have been like had Mr. Miyagi also taught him what his personal belief, what his sincere belief was about? All that movie was about physical things. But in real life, we have somebody better than Mr. Miyagi. We have somebody better than a sensei. We have all of us in this family here with teachers, with mentors, with caregivers, counselors, guides, helpers. We have all the tools here. And in our personal lives, if we take that mantle of sincerity, being truthful and honest and sincere about who we live for, who we belong to, and who we are, if we take that mantle of sincerity and put it on every morning, and when the going gets tough, go back and find a positive point and reconnect again, we will find ourselves in a position of people saying, well, I want to know more. Tell me more. I don't get this. How come you feel this way about it? We'll find ourselves meeting people and that sincerity that we wear when we shake someone's hand, when we greet them with our words, when we look them in the eye and say, I'm glad to meet you, that sincerity will convey spiritually what should be conveyed. But that sincerity has to come from God, from Christ, from the Holy Spirit. Sincerity is based on truth and honesty, credibility, a whole bunch of things. But this is about spiritual action, spiritual sincerity. As we draw our lives together and connect those two endpoints, our lives we live every day and the life yet to be lived, we all as image bearers of and for Christ, we all have a great, great opportunity put upon us. Our good and reasonable service should be to demonstrate our sincerely loving Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Our sincerity can change things in other people. It can bring people to come and ask, to want to know more. The sincerity can bring people to come and share their worst of worst situations, in which case we can immediately go to God with it. As a friend of mine demonstrated week back, uh, weeks back, we can fall on our knees and pray and ask God to take care of the, a situation, to bless us with the gifts of knowing how to interact. But sincerity 
truthfulness, diligence, honesty, all those things are cornerstones that make up Jesus. Everything he did was based on being sincere about what he was doing. And we should be sincere in the same way. So when we go forward in our lives from this week on, over the next week, remember, sincerity is like a badge, a suit of armor, a uniform we put on. That sincerity gives us credibility. Remember that? Use your sincerity to be a marker, to be a light on a hill. Use your sincerity that's given you and be sure to let other people know this is what you believe in, this is what I believe in, this is what is important. And I believe it enough that I live it every day. Sincerely, we love God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Sincerely, they love us. We know Pastor Joe loves the church that he's been given care over. We know we love each other. Sincerely. There's a reason in the old world that was signed at the end of a letter. Sincerely. Richard Allen Miller. It means truly. Sincerity is a great thing, and it can be a great tool for the Holy Spirit to use. So let's be sincere in our thoughts, our actions, our deeds, our caring, our coming and going. 